Hey, what's up guys? Hope everyone out there is doing well today. Uh, first off, I just want to apologize if there's any uh, wind noise in the stream today. I had big plans. I, uh, I was going to go on a, a hike and have like a sick view and set up an external mic to the iPhone today. Uh, but turns out that the lightning to auxiliary port jack does not work as an input really for external microphones. Um, thought it'd be smooth. I've had problems with external mics in the past on the live streams, but uh, you know, I, I think uh, being outside and kind of having some cool backgrounds is just makes the live stream a little bit more fun. Also makes it more fun for me to just get out there. Um, but anyways, long story short, that didn't happen today. I have the appropriate connector in the mail. So next week we'll be out somewhere uh, cooler than my backyard here. Um, but I do apologize for any wind noise in advance. But thank you guys all for being here. And uh, yeah, just go ahead, start dropping questions. Gonna try to answer as many questions as I can per usual. Let us know where you're joining us from. It's always awesome to, to see where you guys are actually at on the live stream here. And today, uh, about at the 30 minute mark, usually, you know, the live stream goes for about an hour. So about halfway through around 30 minutes, I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, snowboard camber profiles. Uh, something that, you know, I've talked about a little bit in the past. I don't think I've ever specifically talked about it on a stream though. And it kind of uh, is relevant today because this evening, uh, or tonight rather, uh, there's gonna be an upload on the channel that's basically gonna be a rocker versus camber test. Uh, really excited to share that video with you guys. I think it turned out really well. It's uh, a test between the Arbor Westmark rocker and the Arbor Westmark camber. Uh, so if you guys did have any questions regarding the differences between rocker and camber, hopefully that video will help you out as well as uh, the kind of midstream uh, stop that we have today. So that's coming up. Going to be going on Patreon after the stream today as well. Uh, so that's going to be patreon.com forward slash board archive if you want to join me there for a, a little bit of a more kind of personal chat. Not as many people. Uh, definitely get all your questions answered there. Kevin has a Patreon as well that you should check out. That's patreon.com com forward slash snowboard pro camp so 30 minute patreon after the stream today pretty much just going to go back to back it's really really nice out today so i'm just going to kind of hang out here and uh we'll do the the patreon as well and yeah other than that uh definitely uh, have some other other videos coming to the channel this week but really the rocker camber is going to be the the biggest one coming soon um, but some others that you guys are going to be stoked on that i've been talking about for a while so I think I think that's everything I had to say. Let's uh, without further ado, let's uh, start looking at the questions you guys have been asking here. Christian Kirov, what's up, man? Forward slash trash bag. Awesome guys, thank you so much for the comments here. Osvaldo uh, joining us from Denver. What's up, man? I was just in Denver yesterday. Lucifer Morningstar, what's up, man? From joining us from the UK, good to see you on the stream here today, man. Nathan from Toronto, uh, Kick Pro, let's see. Kick Pro has a question here. Uh, hey TJ, nice to see you again. What can you say about Arbor's parabolic rocker? Uh, will that do for a novice? Definitely. So basically, uh, you know, Arbor either goes parabolic rocker or camber. Or I forget if they call it parabolic or ellipt elliptical, but it's like the same thing basically. So the rocker is more aggressive or there's more bend in the board towards the middle between your feet. And then as you get to the tips, it starts to mellow out and get less and less rocker. So um, it's more of a gradual rocker shape, but from tip to tip, it is full rocker. There's no hybrid to it whatsoever. Same thing for their camber profiles. It's full camber for the entire length of the board, not hybrid at all. Uh, so that's why I thought those were the two best boards to do the rocker versus camber test. And I definitely think that that parabolic rocker is a, is a pretty good option for a novice. You know, if you're, if you're out there, you know, 10, 15 days a year, you're looking for something that's gonna be easy to control, a little bit looser, more forgiving, rocker is definitely a good way to go. So yeah, I'm a fan of uh, Arbor's rocker. And in that video that's coming out today, you'll uh, hear a little bit more about that rocker profile as well. Also, guys, uh, this is a super chat, so if you have any important questions that you really want to make sure you get answered, you can drop a super chat. It helps us support the channel, and it also highlights uh, your comment for me to make sure that I see it and that uh, you get called out there. It's a great way to support the channel, and we definitely appreciate it. Carrie, what's up, Carrie Pierce? Hope you're doing well today. 
Karam from Kosovo, the Balkans. Awesome. Kick Pro from Russia. Emilian Popov, what's up, man? Good to see you. Another uh, person from Denver here, Josh Archer. What's up, man? I'm sure it's way hotter in Denver. Yesterday it was like 80 degrees in Denver, guys, and uh, it's feeling pretty pretty warm here in Silverthorne today. I actually honestly don't need to be wearing this hoodie, um, but I'm still fairly comfortable. It's probably like 50 or 60 or something. But yeah, we're still boarding out here. We've got Arapahoe Basin open and Loveland. Um, so the basin's still going to be open for like a whole nother month. Um, so we got a month of boarding still. And so still more videos to come. And then on Saturday, it's actually Loveland's closing weekend. Um, and they're doing a banked slalom with Toyota and Never Summer. So I'm going to be checking that out. It should be a lot of fun as well. I haven't done a banked slalom in like, I don't know, five, six years. Uh, it's going to be rad. Justin Flint, what's up, man? Kaiser Royo from Spain, what's up, man? Ramon from Vienna. Co Sarlet from Belgium. And Delfino from Chicago. Oh my gosh, this is awesome, guys. This is like a really international stream we got today here. Thank you guys all for being here. Justin Wong from Saskatchewan. Sam from New Zealand. Matthew from Cali, Christina from the Czech Republic, Washington, awesome guys. Kid Duke from Germany, thanks for uh, letting us know. This is really cool. New York, England, London, what's up guys? All right, cool, let's see if I can find some questions here. Treable Rock from Missouri. Co Sarlet saying uh, they got their first worst fall today. What happened, man? Oh, that's cool. You're still boarding. Suzanne Prozac, what's up, Suzanne? Hope you're doing well. Uh, I, I dropped an email for you uh, about half an hour ago, so I hope you have some time to check that out today or, or this week sometime. Also, just a side note, guys, um, doing some work on the website. So in about a, a month or hopefully less than a month, um, the, the website's going to be totally different, looking uh, looking really good. So a lot of updates coming there and I uh, got some of you guys helping me out with that. So really stoked. Thank you guys for, uh, for helping me out. Katie Ladder from England. Taylor Falls, Minnesota. Awesome, guys. Right. Missy GB. So she's asking, I have a hybrid, the Solomon Wonder. Yeah, my instructor said it's better to have camber. Uh, what's your view? Greetings from London. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I think, you know, when I'm thinking about hybrid profiles, I'm still thinking, you know, is the profile camber dominant or is the profile rocker dominant so if it is a rocker dominant camber profile like a, a lot of the never summers are um, a lot of the lib techs and gnus are going to still going to be rocker dominant even though they're hybrid um yeah i that's still going to feel like overall like a rocker snowboard so um i would say there definitely are some benefits to camber there's some benefits to rocker as well uh so i'll jump into that uh at that halfway mark when i talk about the difference between uh, rocker and camber a little bit but uh, yeah, they're, they're both good. And I think, you know, if you're just learning uh, rocker or rocker dominant profile isn't, isn't a bad way to go. Oh, I lost my spot now. Hooray. Coast Arlet saying that there's no snow in Belgium, but they have an indoor slope. So that's where they were riding. I guess that's where you had your fall. All right, Jimmy Davis. I've been trying to do 360s. I can get them sometimes, but they aren't consistent and I'm having trouble with my rotation. Any tips? Um, yeah, man, so for 360s, I think um, if you're able to get them sometimes, then it sounds like you probably have all this, the skills that you need to do it consistently. Um, the biggest thing I would focus on is, you know, I'm assuming you have frontside 180s down pretty solid. So uh, you need to have a little bit more time in the air uh, than, than for a quick 180. And you really need to focus on turning your head and shoulders all the way around so that your lower body can follow. So that's going to be the biggest thing that's going to help you out. So I hope that helps, Jimmy. I hope you get some time to, to practice still this year. 
Christopher Ritchie. How is Timberline in the late season? Want to do a trip down there sometime in May. Um, yeah, man, I've never really ridden uh, Timberline late season. This is going to be my first year riding on their spring pass. So uh, Kevin and I and a couple of friends, the InMotion SLB guys, are going to be there on May 19th. So our first day on snow is going to be the 20th, and we'll be riding for seven days, seven days on snow, I think. Um, so I'll let you know how it is, but my, from what I've gathered, they they do they do pretty good um, all the way through the late season. You know they they're still getting storms out there. They still have great coverage. Their park is a lot of fun. I definitely think for this time of year, that's probably one of the best places in the world to be. Um, I know. Uh, I'm not sure when Whistler closes, but uh, yeah, T Line's gonna stay open through the summer. Um, definitely, definitely worth checking out. I think May is a good time because you can still get on that Spring Pass, which is only like 140 bucks, unlimited riding from uh, March to the end of May. So yeah, if you guys don't know about that, you can check that out. And uh, <coughs> excuse me, sorry guys. Um, yeah, so we'll be out there from the 19th for like eight days or something and then we'll be back out for high cascade session one So if any of you guys are uh, interested in that, that's a really really good time We'll be there for session one, which I think is June 17th So uh, I know some of you guys are gonna be there and I'm looking forward to meeting all of you and hopefully uh, Yeah, a few of you guys will be out there I think I saw a super chat come through here Osvaldo with the super chat. Thank you, man. I bought a Nitro Quiver Cannon 173. Any thoughts on it? I live here in Denver and got the Epic Pass. If you want to ride, uh, if you want to ride it next season, let me know. For sure, man. So the Cannon isn't one that I'm uh, super familiar with. I know the Squash. I know the Pal. Um, the Cannon is not one that I'm familiar with. I'm sorry, man. I know. Uh, um, I'm not sure the profile or the shape even I can't I can't picture it in my head There's there's I think there's like five or six of those quiver boards or more um, So, you know, I'm sure it's gonna be fun in powder They make some that are kind of more super powder specific some that are a little bit more free ride and better for carving So I'm not exactly sure where that one's gonna fall, but um, I'm sure it's gonna be a lot of fun, man I wish I had more info for you, but um, Yeah, if, if we ever uh, get to get to ride i definitely uh would love to hop on it man so yeah hit me up on instagram if you guys are in the area and you're looking to to get out there and shred one day at board archive kevin's at snowboard pro camp you know get to see some behind the scenes we try to do posts like every day so uh that'd be awesome if you guys check us out there and thanks for the super chat oswaldo i appreciate it man Taylor 1818 Capita Outsiders question mark. Yeah, uh, the Outsiders is a great snowboard. I I rode last year's and I have the the new one as well from Capita. Um, really great board. It's it's on the stiffer side of medium. Fun kind of more aggressive freestyle snowboard. Great for jumps. Still going to be fun outside of the park as well, having that additional stability because um, it's pretty much full camber with a little bit of flat. I think on the ends, maybe rocker. I'd have to double check. Um, primarily camber, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of stability. I view it as more of a jumping board, but it's a lot of fun. Kid Duke, what is a twin tip? Uh, so a twin snowboard or a twin tip snowboard is a board that's exactly symmetrical so if you folded it in half like hamburger style um, it would be exactly symmetrical so um, you know everything about it uh, the side cut the the flex twin flex twin shape everything is going to be symmetrical about it um, and then you also have directional twins and asymmetrical twins which i've talked about in the past but uh basically it's just a board that rides the same in both directions long long answer short All right, Rob Taylor. Hey TJ, is trampoline coaching expensive? How do you recommend getting started? Thanks man, vids are sick, especially the hot garbage. Awesome, Rob, I'm glad you liked the hot garbage video. It's one of my favorite butters, throw it all the time. Um, you know, I think the biggest thing is uh, just the cost of getting into the facility. So, you know, Woodward Copper offers like a season pass, which is pretty awesome. Um, and it's not too expensive so then you could you know get tramp time all the way like the whole winter uh, they're open through the summer as well for a, just a flat rate um, I'm not sure what the cost is for coaching um, I imagine that would that would be probably more expensive but I, I think it could be worth it I'm actually looking into maybe doing some gymnastic stuff stuff this summer myself just trying to get more comfortable in the air and uh, yeah get more trampoline time but I'm sure it varies, you know, depending on your location and the facility and all that type of stuff. 
Awesome. Let's see. I saw. Thought I saw another super chat come through here. Interesting. Let's see if I can find it here. Rugisys one with the super chat. Thank you, man. No question. I'll try to keep an eye out for your comment um, and see. You know, maybe you had a question, but I definitely appreciate the super chat, man. And if, if I miss a super chat, guys, let me know. I definitely do not want to be uh, missing any super chats. But it looks like. From what I can see, that's all of them. So, Mr. Toxic, what can you say about the Burton Trick Pony? Uh, that's really fun snowboard. They did discontinue it for next year, uh, so I would be looking at the Burton Free Thinker as a good alternative. Um, it's like a medium soft flexing twin kind of camber park snowboard. Uh, Kevin and I rode it at North Star on the second Burton uh, step on test. So if you want to see us riding it, check out that video. I, I really enjoyed it. It reminds me a lot of the, uh, uh, oh man, I just totally blanked on the board I was thinking of. Uh, the Burton process as well as uh, the lobster park board. That was the one I was thinking of originally. As far as like the overall performance on it, it reminds me a lot of the lobster park board. Um, but yeah, really fun freestyle board. If you can find one for a good deal, I would I would hop on it if you're looking for that style of board for sure. Christopher Ritchie just bought a fun kink 50% off on backcountry. Love the deals during the off season. Heck yeah, man, that's what's up. So many good deals out there right now. I'm actually I need to do I need to do like a uh, a blog post that just kind of compiles all my favorite discounted spring gear. I'm gonna work on that this week. Um, but yeah, that's sick. You got a good deal, man. And uh, yeah, if you guys are buying anything online, Backcountry Evo, The House, Amazon, anything like that, uh, if you wanna go to boardarchive.com slash retailers or click any of the links in the description before you make your purchase, it also helps to support the channel. So that's pretty huge. Uh, that's probably one of the best ways to help support us. Uh, it's at no additional cost to you. So if you can take the time to do that, That'd be awesome, guys. But Christopher, glad you got a sick deal, man. The Fun Kink is a really fun board. Rob Gams, Portland, Oregon slash Mount Hood. Still getting a little snow. That's what's up. Good to hear. I think the conditions are going to be pretty solid once we get out there. In Motion SLB, what's up, dudes? Hope you guys are having a good day. Levi Briggs asking about the Capita Thunder Stick. I'm not familiar with that Capita board, man. I um, I could look it up and, and you know kind of give you my thoughts on uh, based on the specs, but I've never ridden it, so I'm sorry, man. Tyler Vaughn, I think I'm thinking of getting a new snowboard. What are your thoughts on the Never Summer prototype? Uh, yeah, the prototype two is one of my favorite Never, probably my favorite Never Summer board. I would say it's just like a good all like do it all all around board. Definitely a little bit freestyle leaning. It's a lot of fun in the park, but you can really take that thing everywhere. It's got the ripsaw camber profile, got the ASIM side cut, uh, mid flex. It's a lot of fun. I if you're if you're looking at it and you're liking it, I would get it, man. It's a it's a really sick board. Monkey Bear 360 from England. The CN Gamer from Norway. What's up, guys? Andrew Coates from Ontario. What up, what up? And Gigi from Romania. Cool, man. That might be a first. All right, Charles Lewis uh, from Massachusetts. Could you tell me more about the Capita Ultra Fear? I'm thinking about getting it as a park specific board. Definitely, Charles. Yeah, as a park, as a freestyle specific board, the Capita Ultra Fear is definitely a great choice. I think it's really underrated, honestly. Um, I do have a review on it on the channel if you want to check that out and you can kind of see it, uh, see it in action. It's a bit of an older model, um, but it, it hasn't changed. So check that out. And, um, I would say, you know, it's like a softer flexing, medium soft flexing freestyle board. It's going to have a rocker dominant profile flat between the feet with rocker and the tips. It's really pressable. It's really buttery. A lot of fun on the rails. That flat camber helps you to lock in on rails. And um, 
yeah, it's uh, it's not super aggressive, not super stable, but still fun on on jumps, like moderate sized jumps. I wouldn't be hitting like the like anything super crazy big with it. Um, it, it just doesn't have that much stability. But uh, as a park board to learn and progress with, it's it's a great it's a great board. It's basically like a solid tool to kind of help get you to that next level in park riding. It's a fun board. Raining from Canada. What's up? I like that name. Simple. Dave Button from Wales just got a Jones Hovercraft. That's what's up, man. Yeah, the Hovercraft is awesome. I hope you got the uh, the new one. The, the 2018 has uh, some artwork on it done by my friend Joseph Tony. Um, so he's, he works with... Uh, he works with Jones on some projects. He also works for Armada and does like a lot of independent art stuff. But we used to work park crew together at App Ski Mountain in North Carolina. So it's really cool to see him working on such big, awesome projects. So if you did get the 2018, you're riding my buddy's artwork. It looks really good this year. Last year's is sick too, though. The hovercraft just in general is really sick. All right. So Jacob Talbert asking when we're gonna be at Hood. So yeah, if you didn't catch it before, we're gonna be at Hood from May 19th uh, to the 27th, I think, or the 28th. Um, so we definitely will be out there uh, riding Timberline around then, and then also for High Cascade session one, which starts June 17th. So uh, if you're trying to, to meet up with us while we're out there, those are the dates. Love to see ya. Wilburly, oh, this is a cool question. Never been asked, um, and something I've kind of been thinking about recently. Um, so it's kind of kind of works right now. So he's asking if you could put custom art on a board, what would you put on it? Uh, I definitely would keep the base pretty plain. I think uh, I would have the board archive logo on the base, uh, maybe something like on the nose and tail, symmetrical. So whether you're regular or goofy, it looks the same. And the top sheet would be tough. Um, there's so many different things that I would want to put on it, but uh, I think there would definitely be some some math references, maybe like a probably definitely like a golden ratio reference, some kind of geometry type stuff, and uh, probably some probably like a nature scene as well mixed in there. I'm not not too sure otherwise, but uh, that's where I would start. So hopefully hopefully that'll become a, a reality one day, and uh, I feel like you guys would be stoked on it if I if I did get that done. So we'll see. It's a cool idea for sure. Oh man. Rob Gams, what is the best free ride powder board? It's tough to choose one in particular. I've really been liking the K287 this year um, just because it has a setback stance, a taper, um as as well as some additional width and it's it's camber dominant it's pretty much camber all between the feet with some rocker in the nose and tail uh, but that extra width makes it really fun for carving and the other features just help set a strong edge and uh, also help kind of make it more fun for carving and then that setback stance and taper is going to help in powder it's just a really fun kind of free ride powder board i also really like the burton deep thinker this year that's been a really fun one um, so those are probably my my top two go-to's um, but it's really hard to choose a best. There's a lot of good ones out there. And those are both gonna be camber. I saw your follow-up comment there. You're looking for powder performance, but pop and energy from camber. I think both of those boards are gonna offer that for you. Chopper Styles from Cali. What's up, man? Good to see ya. Noah O'Neill, trying to go to Colorado this upcoming January for about a week. Re what resorts should I for sure hit? Thanks. Um, I would say for sure Keystone. Um, probably Breck as well. I mean, if you're going to come all the way out to Colorado, you might as well hit those staples. Vail and Beaver Creek, um, if, you, if, you, if you're feeling like it. Um, I think, you know, Beaver Creek is a lot of fun for groomers. If you do get any snow and you like tree riding, um, Beaver Creek is also a lot of fun. Vail is really, really fun on a pow day, but the parking situation is kind of insane. Breck parking situation is also, is also kind of insane. Uh, Keystone probably has the best parking. And honestly, man, I think Arapahoe Basin 
would be worth it. Um, it's just got some really fun alpine. It's really, really scenic. Um, and it's just a totally different vibe from the other resorts. So it's probably worth checking out for at least a day as well. And if you have the Epic and you go to A Basin and you're like, you know what, this is terrible. I don't like it. You can just drive down the road and go to Keystone because they're really, really close to each other. Akela Mendoza from Colorado Springs. What's up, Akela? Thank you for uh, using the affiliate links. I would have to go in my analytics and check, uh, but I appreciate it. I'm sure it went through fine. Thank you so much. Gianna Algaretti, what is the camber of your snowboard? Um, I pretty much am always riding, uh, well, I mean, as far as my personal boards go, they're pretty much all camber. Um, obviously, I ride all different kinds of boards with all different shapes and, and things like that. But uh, yeah, I, I generally prefer camber, although I will say rocker can be a lot of fun. Uh, I did ride some rocker boards recently and, and I did have a lot of fun on them, but uh, I'm still I'm still a camber guy. If I had to choose one to ride every day, I would go camber. Let's see here. Jason Song 86 to, uh, saying he wants to go to High Cascade. Come on out, man. It's gonna be a good time. Taylor Vaughn also asked about the Never Summer Prototype 2. Um, yeah, I talked about that a little bit earlier, so you could, uh, after this rewatch and, and find that part, that was probably like 10 minutes ago. Um, also, there's a, there's a video and written review on it, so I would check that out. All right, I'm gonna scroll down a bit. Oh man, our uh, Rudgesis one forgot to write the message. Thanks for the videos. Hashtag Taco Fund. He did a super chat earlier. Um, thanks, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. If I'll, I'll still keep my eyes peeled for your question if you had one. Nash Biddle thoughts on the Scott Stevens Pro model. Um, it's really similar to the Ultra Fear, honestly. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a fun, definitely, obviously, based on, uh, if you've ever seen Scott Stevens snowboard, it's a kind of a freestyle, creative-focused style board. It's going to have uh, some decent flex to it, uh, flat for until outside the insert packs, maybe even a little bit past the insert packs, and then rocker in the nose and tail. It's going to be pressable. It's going to have some decent pop. It's going to be a lot of fun for rails or urban, if you're into that type of stuff, just getting weird on your snowboard. Um, yeah, it's, it's a fun freestyle board. I would, uh, I do have a, a video review on it and I actually, I just rode the new one and I didn't really notice too much of a difference between last year. So check out that video review on the channel and that's gonna give you all the details on that board and you can see it in action. But um, it is a fun board. It's I would consider it rocker dominant even though it's really like flat dominant, but it has a, it does have that rocker in the tips and uh, uh, yeah, I think it feels, uh, mo more similar to a rocker board than a camber board for sure. <laughs> uh, F bomb vlogs. I have a never summer fun slinger. Um, great jib and park board. What do you think about it? Uh, yeah, the fun slinger is a lot of fun. Um, pretty similar to the prototype too, but a little bit softer, a little bit more jibby. Um, I like it a lot. I, I think I, we have a review on, a review on that one as well so i hope you've checked that out uh written review as well on boardarchive.com if you want to check that out but uh yeah it's uh it's a good kind of all-around freestyle board rocker dominant has that ripsaw profile asim really very 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 similar to the prototype 2 just a little bit softer All right, David Kearney, I just started snowboarding and I think I'm doing decent for a starter, but I struggle going straight on flat parts. Any advice? Uh, yeah, so a lot of people, you know, you think you wanna probably stay totally flat when you're going on a flat part to stay straight, but that's actually gonna make your board kind of catch little contours in the snow and kind of make you bounce around and potentially catch an edge and fall. Um, so what I like to do is just keep a little bit of pressure on my toe or my heel, and you can, you can still go in a pretty much straight line doing that, and that's gonna 
prevent you from uh, catching your edges. So I would focus on that uh, next time you're out there, David. Hope that helps you out. Again, sorry for the wind, guys. I hope it's not too bad and you guys can hear me okay. Osvaldo, do you like Winter Park? I think it's great for groomers. I haven't ridden Winter Park in like, oh my gosh, it's been a long, long time since I've ridden Winter Park, so I can't really speak on it, man. I'm sorry. I would like to get out there uh, maybe next year, though. All right, we got some super chats here, and then we'll dive into that rocker versus camber, um, or the, the snowboard profile um, bit here in just a sec. Uh, so Pablo with the super chat. Thank you, Pablo. Appreciate it, man. Uh, hey, TJ, I'm a beginner slash intermediate rider and looking for a new board. I don't ride in the park and mainly like free riding. My first board seems wobbly when going fast and chatters when making hard turns. Um... So I'm not sure what board you have, but it sounds like it might be a rocker board. Um, I think at your level, something like the Battalion Fun Kink could be a really good option. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna still ride pretty much the same in both directions, uh, but it has that 99% twin shape. Uh, so you do have a little bit more kind of uh, free ride all mountain powder performance with that shape. It's a soft flexing snowboard too. So you're gonna be able to control it pretty well. And um, it's gonna have three BT, so it's not gonna be catchy, and it's full camber for the entire length of the board, so um, it should be a lot a lot better. Um, it should eliminate a lot of those problems that you're having. So I'd kind of look at a board that style. Um, let's see, the fun kink comes to mind. You could also look at, hmm, for free riding, you could look at something like the uh, the GNU Hyper Curve, um, or you know, even uh, if you're okay with more of a directional shape, the hyper curve is directional, um, whereas you know the uh, fun kink does not have a setback stance. Um, but if you're cool with going directional, I would uh, I would look at some some boards like that. Having that directional shape is just going to kind of uh, help to that edge more, make it more fun for carving, and give you more powder performance as well, and allow you to swivel through the trees a little bit easier. But honestly, the top board that's coming to mind for you is the fun kink. So. I would check that guy out. Ivan Doggeter with the super chat. No question. Shout out, Ivan. Appreciate it, my man. And malpractice time with another super chat and no question. I appreciate all the super chats, guys. Thank you so much. All right, Lucifer Morningstar with another super chat here. Uh, TJ, stoked on your suggestion of a Capita Mercury. I was thinking of the 157. I can get a 155 and upwards. I'm six foot and 165 pounds. Uh, my fun slinger is a 156. Also, what uh, bindings would you recommend? Awesome, man. Yeah, the Mercury is a really fun board. It's a good compromise when you're looking for something that's like free ridey but still kind of park friendly. It does have a setback stance and all that jazz you're looking for with a free ride board, so it has all that performance, but it's still a lot of fun in the park, I thought. Um, so, yeah, six foot 165. Hmm, honestly. Yeah, if you're looking, if you're not gonna really be using it in the park, I would go 157. That's that's gonna be a pretty good compromise. If you are gonna spend a lot of time in the park, like 50% or more, I would say go for the 155. Um, and for bindings, I would go for the Union Atlas, hands down. Um, yeah, I think that would be the best the best match for that board. Paul O with the super chat. What's up, Paul? Hope you had a good week, man. Thanks for hopping on here. Thanks for the super chat. Uh, which one has a more similar ride to the Evil Twin? The Capita DOA or the Never Summer Prototype 2? Um, I would say probably the Capita DOA because it's still going to be camber dominant, uh, whereas the Prototype 2 is, is uh, going to be a little bit looser. Um, but those are all three awesome boards, man. Honestly, I mean, once, you know, I think you have the DOA and the Prototype 2, so. Um, you know, the only thing you're going to get out of the Evil Twin is the 3BT, which is great. Um, but honestly, the DOA and the Prototype 2 are great complements. Um, you know, I would say now that you have both of those, really spend some time on them and figure out if you like that rocker feel or the camber feel more. Um, and since they're both kind of freestyle, all mountain, like do it all um, leaning, um, you can kind of figure that out. And then in the future, know, you know, when you get that style of board, you know, you're going to get camber, you're going to get rocker. 
Shelby Kaiser with the super chat. Uh, just picked up the Arbor Cadence. So stoked for winter. <clears throat> hashtag adorable TJ. That hashtag Shelby, I, I don't know about it. Um, so yeah, the Cadence is a, it's a solid board. I'm glad you're stoked on it. Yeah, I think you're gonna have a lot of fun out there. Uh, I'm not sure, I don't remember where, what part of the world you're from, but uh, I'm sure you're gonna have a lot of fun with it. As far as Ar uh, Arbor makes uh, some great boards, you know, they just pack a lot of tech into them. So yeah, with that grip tech and that rocker profile, I think it's gonna be pretty solid. And another super chat from Alex Garrett. Thanks, Alex. Um, is the flat profile the best of rocker and camber? No, no, it is not. Uh, so I, I totally understand why you would think that because it's like in between rocker and camber, right? Um, but I think flat profile tends to be Honestly, if, if, there's, if it's going to be flat, I prefer it to be some kind of hybrid like Capita does. Um, even K2 does a lot of hybrid stuff with their uh, mainly flat profiles. I think that Battalion's 3BT offers the best of rocker and camber because you still get that full camber experience, that precise, powerful, poppy feeling, but it's even more catch-free than rocker thanks to that 3BT. So that's my personal opinion on it. Um, I think flat profile boards do really well for freestyle. They, you just have a lot of surface area to, uh, get onto like jib features. So they lock in really well. Um, but I don't think that it really combines the best of rocker and camber. I think that's just kind of a, I don't know if, if, if that even is a myth, but, uh, yeah, I would go for a hybrid or a battalion if you're looking to get the best combination of rocker and camber. Awesome, guys. So that's all the super chats for now. Thank you guys so much for the super chats. I'm going to take uh, just a minute here and talk about uh, snowboard profiles. So we've been talking a lot about it already. I think just because it's in the title, it's kind of prompted uh, some questions kind of related to that, which is awesome. Um, so I'll just kind of go through and give give my thoughts on it so I'll start with rocker so a rocker snowboard is gonna have this kind of shape to it so the middle of the board is making most of the contact the nose and tail are uplifted off of the snow so because of that it's gonna pivot uh, it's gonna have a looser feel um, it's also gonna be uh, you know more forgiving because those contact points are lifted it's just not gonna be as catchy uh, generally speaking it's gonna help to float and powder the general shape of that snowboard is gonna kind of that naturally poke that nose up out of powder at least more so than camber so um, I think uh, those are a few benefits right off the top of my head for rocker also going to be a little bit more buttery more pressable those types of things because the board is already naturally in that shape um, you can pretty much get into what looks like a press before you even start bending the board on a rocker board so it just makes uh, presses much easier you don't have to do as much work um, and I think the high level those are pretty much uh, most of the benefits that you're gonna get out of rocker um, looser more forgiving easier turn initiation, better float and powder, um, easier for presses and for butters. Then the, the next kind of major camber profile is gonna be regular camber. So it's the exact opposite of rocker. So it kind of has this shape going on. Um, so with camber, as soon as you step on the board, you're actively putting tension in the snowboard. Those contact points are actively being pushed down into the snow, so you get a much more precise feel out of camber because uh, straight away, you know, there's energy in the board pushing the snowboard into the snow. You're also gonna get more pop out of camber, all things being equal, just because you can load up more tension in the board. As soon as you start to lift up that nose, you're bending you're bending against the natural shape of the board. So you're just uh, loading uh, more tension up in the board more quickly. And I would say overall, you can load up more tension in a camber snowboard. So you just get more pop for that reason. You're also gonna have more stability um, for the same reason. It's just gonna feel a little bit sturdier, a little bit more um, precise. You know, as soon as soon as soon you lift the nose or the tail on a camber board, you're gonna, you're gonna feel that action and that tension start building up in the board. So it's definitely, um, I would say, like high level benefits of camber it's going to be a more powerful snowboard it's going to have a more precise feel to it it's going to have more pop 
it's gonna have more stability. So as you start to ride more aggressively um, and hit, you know, say you're hitting bigger gaps, you're hitting more technical lines, um, you're hitting bigger jumps, you're doing all those types of things that are um, what I would call like higher impact scenarios, um, a camber board is just gonna perform better in my opinion. So I think um, those are gonna be the high level benefits of camber. And of course, um, you're gonna have to be more on point. It's just, you know, it's gonna take, um, it's not gonna take as much effort to, to get the board to do what you want it to do. So you need to be more on point and precise with your movements uh, to make sure that you're not catching your edges and things like that. I also wanted to just quickly talk about hybrid camber profiles. Um, I've talked about 3D base shapes in another live stream. Uh, so hopefully you guys saw that one. I'm not gonna bring that up right now. Um, so just talking about hybrids. So um, probably the two most popular hybrids are exactly the opposite of each other, who would have thought. Um, the first one is gonna be the, the rocker dominant hybrid that you'll see on a lot of GNU's, a lot of Libtex, um, all of Never Summer snowboards. They're gonna be rocker between the feet and then cambered under your foot. So the overall shape of the board is still gonna be rocker. If you put it on a flat surface, it's gonna, it's gonna teeter-totter over that kind of middle fulcrum point. Um, so I view those as rocker dominant boards. You know, if I'm describing the performance of them, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say all the same things that I would say about a rocker board like I did before. The only benefit that you get is, um, you know, once you get to the end of that rocker profile and you start loading up tension in the snowboard, that camber does help to load up a little bit more tension in the snowboard so you can get a little bit more pop, uh, maybe even a little bit more stability out of those guys. Um, but overall, it's going to feel like a rocker dominant snowboard. And um, yeah, and you know, regardless of that hybrid, you're still going to have to rock to the end of the profile before you start loading up tension in the board. Then you're gonna have the opposite of it, which is gonna be a cam rock profile. So camber between the feet, rocker in the nose and tail. Um, it's also a really, really common shape. You know, the Solomon Huck Knife is one of, one of the really popular boards that comes to mind that has that shape. And so um, there are some variations of it. So like, you know, some boards have rocker just going between the inserts or camber between the inserts only. Some have the camber going out to the end of the inserts. Some have camber going out even past the inserts before you start to get into that rocker nose and tail. So depending how much of the board is camber is, um, how much it's going to feel like a, a true full camber snowboard. Um, but generally speaking, it is going to be, um, you're going to have that stability of camber underfoot. You're going to feel that when you're carving, when you're jumping, when you're doing drops, um, any of those higher impact scenarios, you're going to notice that camber underfoot. You're going to be able to load up ollies a little bit better, but you're going to have a, a looser feel in the nose and tail. It's going to help to make it a little bit less catchy as well. Um, and it's also uh, my personal favorite thing about those boards is they're really fun for pressing. So that rocker in the nose and tail helps you lean over that nose get that board pressed out, find that nice balance point. Um, and is the same thing for butters. You can get some really nice looking butters on those style of boards. Another really popular one that comes to mind that uh, I like a lot is the Yes, the Greats. Um, so those are the main camber profiles that's gonna cover the majority of snowboards. You'll find some other variations of that, of course. There's lots of companies doing all kinds of weird things with their shapes nowadays, but uh, I think that's, that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about. So I hope that that little tidbit helps you guys out as you're looking at new boards, uh, looking through these deals over the summer. And like I mentioned before, if you are doing any shopping online, please check out the links in the description or boardarchive.com slash retailers. Helps to support the channel. Uh, definitely would be stoked on that. And and uh, yeah, hope, hope that helps you find the board that just exactly suits what you want to do. And again, uh, we're going to have that rocker versus camber video uh, comparing the Arbor Westmark rocker and the Arbor Westmark camber dropping on the channel later today. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Make sure you're subscribed and that you hit that notification bell so you can see when that video goes live or it goes, goes online as well as any time uh, that we go live here on the channel. That'd be awesome if you guys uh, hit that notification bell. And also I see we still have like 98 people here. We got 51 likes, which is awesome. If we get that up to 100, I would be pumped. And uh, yeah, that's that's it for the the uh, snowboard profile talk that I wanted to do today. So we'll spend the rest of the time here just kind of getting back to answering y'all's questions. And I think I did see another super chat come through here. Um, oh, one sec, guys. I'm gonna readjust. Ah. Oh. 
Sorry about that, guys. Um, all right, so we had a super chat come through from from F Bomb Vlogs. Uh, check out my channel. Not as good as you guys, but I'm trying to get there. Took a hard fall, still recovering. Well, thanks for the super chat, man. And uh, yeah, if any of you guys want to check it out, um, I have not looked at his channel yet, so I have no idea what to expect. But uh, yeah, thanks for the super chat, my man. All right, back to the questions here. Thank you guys for all the, the questions today. I appreciate it. You guys ask some awesome questions. It's always fun just hopping on here, getting to hang out for a little while with you guys and uh, hopefully, you know, provide some value, answer some questions and, uh, you know, maybe hang out on Patreon later too. Isaac Morris. Hey TJ, you're riding with David Jones soon. I am not. Uh, hopefully in New Zealand, I think there's a a pretty pretty good chance we're all going to be shredding again in New Zealand um, later this year, uh, but that's a few months down the road. So right now, David's in is in Whistler, as you probably know since you asked about him. Um, so maybe Kevin will get out there with him again. I know they dropped a couple videos together recently. I wish I could have been there. It looks like a lot of fun up in Whistler in the spring right now. But uh, unfortunately, not unfortunately, Colorado is great. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm out here in uh, in Colorado, not in Whistler. CT Army. Hey, TJ, I just bought a LibTech TRS and Union Bindings. What do you think about that match? Great match, man. Hopefully you saw the TRS review. I was rocking my Union Forces um, on that. And I think the Force pairs really well with the TRS as well as the Atlas. Um, and I, I didn't mention this in the beginning, but another video that, uh, that I did finish filming and it'll be dropping um, within the next week uh, more than likely is uh, the Union binding comparison video. I've been talking about it way too long. I know a lot of you guys were really hyped to see it. And uh, so that's finally going to be coming out. So I, I did a direct comparison of the Union Contact versus the Union Force versus the Union Atlas. Um, so super hyped. I finally got that video done. I learned something about myself. I prefer stiffer binding. So I'm going to be rocking the Atlas as much as possible moving forward. Um, I think that's, that's my favorite. Um, but yeah, it should be a fun video coming out soon. Um, so yeah, enough, just to answer your question, I think, uh, I think the force and the Atlas would pair really well and I'm stoked you got the TRS, man. That's a sick board. And Rob Taylor with the big super chat. Thank you so much, Rob. I appreciate it, man. And he says, uh, is TJ number two your main cameraman? Uh, dude is a pro. Awesome shots. <laughs> awesome. I'm going to let him know you said that. I don't think he's on the stream today, but he'll be super excited that uh, you said that about his filming. Um, thanks to you and Kevin. Helped me so much this year. Do you guys ever rent boards when you travel? Just ordered a 2019 DOA. Cannot wait. Amazing, Rob. That's sick. The The new DOA is going to be awesome, man. I, I haven't ridden it yet. I'm going to be doing some laps on it here in the next couple of weeks, but uh, yeah, I don't think it changed since last year. So yeah, you know, the DOA go to all around killer. Um, so I think you're going to really like that board, man. And uh, when we are traveling, we, we don't rent boards. Um, we've never rented a board I don't think ever. <laughs> um, so usually when I travel, uh, depending on all the factors, I I bring two to three boards. I've never, I've brought more than that before, but usually I try to bring around three boards. Um, and I'll try to do a lot of demos as well as much as possible. So like, you know, in Japan, there was a snowboard shop that had the spring break catamaran. And um, I was already had a whole nother video planned for that day but I saw that they had that available for demo and uh, they were, they were let me get on that for the day. So that was awesome. Um, and I've had lots of other places as I've been traveling, uh, offered to, to demo boards, but I've never actually, uh, rented one. So, um, I think, you know, demoing boards is awesome. And, um, if you do get the opportunity to, to demo a board, I would go for it just so you can, you know, feel out the different shapes, the different profiles um, for yourself and not just take my word for it. But uh, yeah. Um, and to answer the first part, uh, TJ number two, uh, last year, I would say he was my main cameraman for sure. Uh, this year, he only, he moved back to New Jersey. So he was only up here for, uh, he was up here for like a few weeks, um, but he wasn't like staying with me or anything and he wasn't riding every day. So we were able to ride and film a few videos together. Obviously you guys have seen him in a few of the videos. Um, super stoked he got to meet Kevin and stuff, but uh, he's back in New Jersey. So I've been uh, filming with other people this year. Um, 
I'm trying to get it where, where me and Kevin are, are doing all the videos together. I think uh, he's, he's, TJ does a great job and I like working with TJ, but obviously since he's in New Jersey, I think, uh, I think Kevin's my favorite cameraman. I have a lot of fun getting to, to work with Kevin. All right, another super chat here from Lucifer Morningstar. Thank you, my dude. I can get a 2018 Mercury for 460 instead of 660. Yeah, that's a pretty good deal, man. What is that? That's like 30% off or something. Um, more than that. The only difference is in the 2019 model is grid woven tech tape. <laughs> I don't think that'll make much of a difference. Thanks for your help and advice, brother. Uh, yeah, man, honestly, that does sound kind of like a bit of a marketing um, thing just to kind of make it different from last year. Like um, you'll see that across a lot of brands doing that. Um, I personally have not ridden the new Mercury, so I couldn't say if it, if it did make a huge change, but I really don't think it's gonna make a drastic change. You know, it's still gonna be the Mercury that we all um, know and love. So. Awesome, man, yeah. Snag that deal while you can, Lucifer, for sure. All of you guys, right now is a great time. Um, all, the, all the websites online or your local shops, um, they won't have as much selection, but everywhere the prices are dipped right now. So definitely keep your eyes peeled. Um, you know, pretty soon it's gonna get to the point where there's just only the really random obscure sizes left. So uh, I'm sure that there will be um, bigger discounts, but they probably won't have your size. So now is a great time to be looking at that type of stuff. Uh, does Battalion's 3BT take some getting used to? I ride a DOA currently. Um, I think so. Yeah, it's definitely going to be something noticeable um, that you're going to notice right away when you step on a 3BT board. But I would say within your first day, you know, possibly even within your first couple of runs, you're going to be totally used to it and, uh, and it's not going to be a big deal at all anymore. I love it, man. And I, swip, I swap back and forth between 3BT and non-3BT all the time and uh, I don't have any trouble with that anymore. Ruby F, uh, is there... Are there really a difference between boards for men and women? Um, it depends. So women's boards, generally speaking, um, you know, so a lot of brands will just do, um, you know, they'll put a different graphic on the on the women's board. In the industry, I've heard a lot of people say uh, pink it and shrink it, um, which is a pretty accurate description of what they do. Basically, they put on a graphic that they think is more appealing to women and they offer it in smaller sizes. So, you know, shorter lengths, narrower waist widths and softer flex to just um, accommodate for, you know, um, that a lot of women are generally gonna be uh, smaller, smaller feet, um, don't not as don't not gonna weigh as much um, so a lot of companies do that there are some companies that do actual women specific design um, so they actually engineered the board um, from the cord and every all the tech that goes into it for women but um, yeah long answer short there there is a difference uh, between men's and women's boards but the biggest difference is just going to be that the women's boards are offered in smaller sizes with narrower waist widths Origiman, Warpig or Lobster Haldor Pro for loose freestyle. I have now the 2019 Haldor Pro. Oh, dude, I definitely would go for the Haldor Pro, man. You made the good, you made the right choice. I think the Warpig, like the Twin Pig, um, is going to be a lot of fun. I'm really excited to try that board out next year. But uh, for loose freestyle, Haldor Pro all the way. I mean, if you follow him on Instagram, you know he likes to stay nice and loose. So. All right, Hilly B, what do you think of the Jones Explorer or the T-Rice Pro? Looking for a new board, intermediate rider, mostly groomers, and free ride. 
Thanks for any advice. Um, so with the Explorer and the T-Rice Pro, you're, you're gonna get magnet traction on both. So that's gonna help for carving on you know variable terrain and on ice. Um, so you're gonna get that extra grip, which is awesome. Uh, the Explorer is gonna be softer than the T-Rice Pro, but it's also gonna be camber dominant. Camber between the feet, rocker in the nose and tail. Um, really, really fun snowboard. I think you're gonna, it also is gonna be directional with a setback. So I think you're gonna get better float out of that guy. Um, Let's see. Um, all right, you said you're an intermediate rider. So honestly, man, at an intermediate level, um, even though it is camber, I would go for the for the Jones Explorer, man. I think I think you're gonna have more fun on that guy. It's, um, even though it's camber, I think it's a little bit less aggressive than the T Rice. So uh, that would be my pick. Nano, I have a Union Force binding size large. The binding has a tiny bit of overhang on my board. Is that okay? Um, yeah, that's okay. I've worn large unions in the past and um, they did overhang just a tiny little bit. Um, just as long as you're making sure you're using that heel cup adjust to make sure that that boot is centered over the footbed as much as possible, um, that's gonna be the, the biggest thing you can do. Um, I would say, generally speaking for sizing on bindings, if you have a size 11, um, go for a large, a 10 and a half, you can still fit in a medium. Um, and you, you wanna try to fit in the smallest, uh, size possible um, that you can um, just to reduce the the footprint on the snowboard it's going to give you better performance so if you if you can fit in a medium uh, when you upgrade um, that would be a good way to go but yeah if you the large i think you're going to be just fine man brian price thank you for the compliment man appreciate it i'm just doing the best i can out here Nathan Wallace, uh, hey bro, board recommendations on intermediate rider, bigger dude, six foot two, 250 pounds, looking at the Skunk Ape versus the War Pig. Um, the War Pig XL in Australia and New Zealand, limited powder. Um, yeah, honestly, those are those are two really great options, probably, uh, probably the top two I would point you towards. Also check out the Battalion Goliath. Um, that's one that comes to mind that you didn't mention. Um, I, the biggest thing, you know, the war pig is going to be camber. That skunk ape is going to be rocker. Um, so since you're an intermediate rider, I think, um, I think you could handle either of them pretty well since you have a good bit of weight behind you to kind of manhandle that board a little bit. Um, but I think that the rocker is just going to be a little bit easier for you. So I'd go for the skunk ape, um, or maybe the Goliath, if that sounds good. I think the war pig might be just a little bit aggressive. Um, if you're committed, you know, if you're going to get like 30, 40, 50 days, this year maybe go for the war pig but if you're only going to get like 15 20 or less um, i'd go for the skunk ape all right the true family tj what do you think of the union flight pro the union flight pro is my favorite uh entry level binding if you're looking for uh, another thing as you're putting together a snowboard kit i think that um you know it's boots are going to be the place that you want to spend uh, you want to get the right boot. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying you want to spend the most money on boots, but, um, I wouldn't skimp on boots cause that's going to have a huge impact on your overall experience. Um, and I think that the flight pro is a good place to save money if you're looking to save money on, on binding. So coming in at 150 brand new, they're on sale for probably like 130 now. Um, great binding, you get that lifetime warranty on the base plate and heel cup. They're not, uh, they're not super sturdy. Um, you know, it's going to be a softer flexing binding. It's probably the softest binding on the line, but um, it's not the softest binding out. You know, like the Arbor uh, Hemlock, I think, is way softer than the Flight Pro. So it's a great budget binding. If that's what you're looking for, I would, I would go for it. It's solid. And it's really lightweight, too. All right, guys. Let's see if I can find a few more questions here. Alan, hey TJ, Burton Cartels versus Union Bindings. Um, so uh, Kevin just recently put out a video talking about the differences between um, Burton's and Union's. Uh, I think he was more familiar with the Malavitas um, and the Union Atlas. Um, good video to check to check out uh, 
you know, he has more experience performance wise comparing the two, but I think the biggest, really the one thing I would want to make you aware of, I think they both make great bindings, is that if you try to put a Burton on a, a Burton binding on a non-Burton snowboard, you're going to sacrifice a little bit of side-to-side -side adjustability. You're not going to get any micro adjustability side-to-side, -side. you just have to go to the next binding over. Um, so as long as you're cool with that, I think they're both good. But personally, man, if you're looking at that that binding, I would go for the Union Force, and I think that it's just going to be uh, a little bit better, personally speaking. So, um, but yeah, they're both good. So I hope that helps you out, man. And Carol K, have you been riding the Slush Slasher already? Not yet, uh, but that's going to be coming soon. Uh, when I asked you guys what board I should ride first, when Capita sent me all those boards, uh, the vast majority of you said slush slasher so that is definitely going to be coming this summer and uh i'm stoked to ride it man awesome guys thank you guys so much for being here about to hop on patreon for 30 minutes if you want to come hang out over there that's patreon.com forward slash board archive kevin's is going to be patreon.com forward slash snowboard pro camp um, so hope to see you guys there. I'll be on there in about 10 minutes. Um, also, if you want to pick up one of these hats, they're down in the description. I'd be super stoked. Um, really, really hyped on how these came out. Hit us up on Instagram. Uh, Kevin's at Snowboard Pro Camp. I'm at Board Archive. Again, thank you guys so much for being here. Keep your eyes peeled for the next live stream going down on Friday with Kevin. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. You guys are awesome. Thanks again for being here, and I'll see you next Monday. Oh wait, we got one more super chat snuck in at the last second. Tyler, you dog. All right, Tyler Adderson from Minnesota. I learned to ride this year. Coda, camber, or trick pony for groomers with some tree runs and a little park. Trick pony, 100%. The Coda camber is way too aggressive. It's one of the stiffest boards that Arbor makes. So thanks for the super chat, Tyler. Thank you guys again, and I will see you next Monday. Keep your eyes peeled for the video dropping tonight. It's gonna be awesome. See you guys next week. We're on Patreon.